Hi all. Okay, this uh, part three, we'll go ahead and finish this up. We'll start with number 11. Uh, in case you missed the first two, we went over the other parts of this. This is, uh, this is turning out to be a video series on how to start a snowplow company. So first video, we covered the first one here. Second video, we went over two, three, four, five. And then uh, down here, we'll start on number 11. Okay, so most likely you're gonna have a straight plow. A V plow is a more expensive type plow. I don't have any experience with V plows, but from what I've heard, they're pretty expensive. I've seen comments. One fella wrote he's seen them for about 6,000. Yeah. My research was for a good one, a good brand name, they were like around 10,000. So that's just something you'll have to do your own research on. Uh, most plows you see out there are straight plows. So if you buy a truck that doesn't have a plow, most likely you're going to end up with a new plow. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of used ones out there. And the used ones I have seen, you probably wouldn't want to put them on your truck. Uh, they, you know, you go out Craigslist and buy a used one, it might be missing parts or the parts are broke or you just can't tell, you know. So, most likely you're going to end up with a new one. Uh, straight plows are about 5000 give or take a little bit. Uh, there's cheaper ones, they call them a home plow. H-O-M-E and they really aren't for snow plowing for a business they're more for somebody to put on their truck just to do their own driveway they aren't really connected to the truck in a strong way so I wouldn't recommend using one of those for a business uh, plus I don't know if it a home plow could handle the uh, aprons like the snow plows from the city push all the snow up onto the driveway apron uh, I've seen mine it's been pretty deep there's times that it's probably up to my knees and three four feet wide you know I don't think a home plow could handle that uh, you'll see a lot of used parts on eBay and on Craigslist but uh, if you're not mechanical, how do you know if those things work? You, know, you might buy a plow and it's missing a major part. You still have to go spend 300 bucks on some type of part to make it work. Of course, it would be best to have a V plow because when you plow with a straight plow, a lot of snow falls off the edges. And then you have to back up, scrape it up again. You know, it just gets to be a pain. So it's best to have a V plow, but from what I've heard, they're big and it's hard to get into tight spaces. So I did have a store manager for a major snow plow company tell me that his mechanics hate the v-plows because they break down a lot i know i said that in one of my previous snowplow videos and i got a few comments from guys that have used v-plows and they said that's not true that they don't break down a lot so you just have to take that one with a grain of salt you know do your own research there I've never seen a V-plow up close, but I, I heard they're big and heavy. So you probably wouldn't be able to put one on a 150. 
you might be able to but uh, it would probably be better on a 250 uh, that fellow that I talked about earlier that worked at the stone yard he had told me that he saw guys use V plows to do driveways he said it's a tight squeeze but it can be done uh, straight plows are a pain because of spill off the sides yeah. uh, I think in general you should have wings on a straight plow that's just like small little ends that kind of cup the snow in but it just it depends on what you're plowing if you're plowing a parking lot you don't want wings because you're pushing it all over to one side so it just depends on what you're gonna plow you know fit your plow to your job number 12 put some weight in the bed of your truck uh, in my manual for my truck it says the trucks run better with some weight in the back they're meant to carry weight so if you put a 800 pound plow on the front the truck is leaning forward that adds more to the problem of the truck not being uh, level well it's level but you know the weight's not distributed right so I have a video about the weight and what I recommend is what I have in mind I have six bags of sand bought it at Walmart it's like six seven dollars a bag a total of 480 pounds it cost me I think $48 so plus I have a toolbox that's about another hundred pounds or so maybe less yeah the fella at the stone yard he had told me he used to just put a pallet of bricks in the back of his bed so I don't know about that because if you get in a wreck all those bricks come flying at you now what I found this year is my sandbags are just big ice cubes sitting in the back of the bed they're rock solid so you know if you get stuck in the snow they aren't going to be any good as far as uh, pouring the sand on the ground so uh, what I had done was I bought them last winter and then I stored them outside during the summer I had them covered up with a tarp you know I used duct tape on all the holes so the water couldn't get in but uh, they're still big ice cubes so it's real hard to recommend the sand and I don't recommend the bricks uh, I built a uh, a frame out of a piece of wood to keep my sand in one spot that's silly I don't recommend that either but what I think would be a better thing to do is just buy some salt in my area you can get a bag of 40 pound salt for like five bucks at tractor supply and uh, just buy like six or eight of those of course you should have a cover on the back of your bed to keep things dry you know I've seen videos uh, where guys just let the snow go into the back of the bed that works but what happens when the snow melts then you don't have no weight I tried gravel I bought some gravel I, I bagged it up in cat litter bags that worked great you know I taped it up with duct tape but uh, you have to move that stuff around in and out all the time store it someplace in the summer you know. right now my thought is just get some salt bags of salt you know, put a truck cover on your bed and uh, just put some salt bags in there uh, you can spread them out put your shovels on top of that works great okay N number 13 when you start your business you got to check with the local city the local county and the state call 
your state capital, uh, check on the permits that you might need. Uh, I call around my area and I don't need anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, that fella at the stone yard, he was telling me if you go 30 miles west, the guys who snow plow need a sticker on their windshield. They have to buy a permit to snow plow in that area. So, you know, that same state is just next county over. And I don't even know if it's that county or if it's just that city where they want people to have a sticker. If you put up a sign in front of your house or on your truck, I was told I didn't need a permit for the sign on the truck. See, like when you put a sign up on a store, like uh, that picture of my, my music store I showed you, I had to get a sign permit for the store. And I thought I might need one for the truck, but I called the city and they said I didn't. But if I was to put up a small sign in front of the house, I might need a permit for that. They usually don't cost a lot, you know, like maybe 50 bucks or so. so. But, you know, that's something that you might want to contact a local lawyer for. Most lawyers, you can talk to them first time for free to see if they can help you. Uh, but you can do most of the legwork yourself just by working the phone. Just spend one day on the phone, call your local city, like call two or three people in the building and see if you can find someone who knows about snow plowing if you need a permit. And same with the county. Something else that might be good is ask them if there's any laws about how you snow plow in your area. Uh, I've heard that in some areas there are laws that you can't push the snow across the street. You know? uh, that fellow that worked at the stone yard, he had said to me, he said in most areas the snow has to stay on the property. So you're not allowed to move the snow off the property. I've heard in rural areas you are allowed to push it across the road. So, so we'll add that one here. Okay then, also, when you start your business, how are you going to run the business? There's three main types. Are you going to just do it as a sole proprietor? You know, you just say, okay, I'm in business. Yeah. Or you can do a full corporation. You know, you, have, you should go through a lawyer, have them file all the forms. You know. These days you can go out to the web and go to those websites and pay them $99 in your corporation. But if you're going to go that route, it would be best to go through a lawyer. It's going to cost some money. It probably costs about $1,000 or more. So, uh, Something that I would recommend for this though is an LLC. That's where you're protected as a corporation but you pay your taxes as a sole proprietor, as your regular person. So in my state, I went to the state website in my capital and they have a web page just for small business and they talk about this LLC. They have the forms that you can download I think it was like $120, fill out the form online and give them your credit card. You're an LLC as soon as you click the submit button. The reason why you would want an LLC or a corporation is because if somebody sues you, they can only sue your company. They can't take 
your personal belongings. They can't take your car, they can't take your house, they can't take your money. It, it, it protects you as a person. They can only sue your corporation. So I'm not a lawyer, so contact your lawyer about the details there, but that's the reason why you would want an LLC or a corporation. As a sole proprietor, if somebody sues you, they're suing you as a person. They can take everything you own. Okay, if you're gonna hire employees, if you're a corporation and you hire employees, then you have to worry about workman's comp and health insurance and all that other stuff. It's a good idea to get a lawyer first, you know, so you know you're protected. And they can set all this stuff up for you. Uh, along with the lawyer, you should have an accountant. Just go to your yellow pages and you'll see list and list of accountants. Just work the phone, call around and talk to a few of them. Tell them what you're thinking about doing. Something you might want to do is contact your local uh, small business association. What you can do is just go to your state capital go to your state capitals website and they should have links to the small business association in your state you won't have to go to, to your capital in your state but like to the the big city next to where you live will have a federal building uh, inside that federal building there'll be an office for the small business association you can make an appointment with them and uh, uh, last I knew it, it was free. You could go there, meet with the people. They give you advice on how to start your business. They might even have uh, mentors. There might even be mentors in your town that they can set up meetings with you what a mentor would do is like you would go over their house once a week and just kind of hang out with them and they give you ad advice on how to start your business and it's all free through the small business association uh, i didn't do it when i started the snowplow company but when i did the music store i did it then and that's exactly how i did it in my mentor was a local fella worked at the local factories uh, he's like 80 something year, years old had 60 years worth of experience building factories uh, while I was going to him they the company actually sent him to South America to build another factory so and it was all free I'd go over the house once a week and just small tips that you might not even think of uh, he may not know the specifics of snow plowing but he'll know how to set up a business make sure you didn't miss nothing so uh, the only bad thing that I can see about a full corporation is that when you file your taxes you know you go to H&R Block and you have them file your taxes it's expensive it's about a thousand dollars or more you know, give or take a little bit uh, if you know the fella or the person at HR block you've been going to them for years they might give you a deal but usually when you file your taxes that's where they really get you that's just to file the forms that's not the extra tax you know just to file the forms as a sole proprietor, you're not protected. You know, if you get sued, they can take everything you own. From my point of view now, I would recommend the LLC for a snowplow business. 
I think that's what most small businesses do now. Yeah. Check with your lawyer. Uh, keep records. You know, write everything down. 